Your Excellency, the Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the UAE, to the United Arab Emirates, Ambassador Mohammed Dansata Rimi, the Consul General of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in Dubai, Abu S. Mohammed, the Consul General of Ghana, Mr. Samantha Gifi Bukhari, the Special Assistant to the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Middle East Region, Pastor Adeboke, Pastor Charles Adeboke, Captains of Industry, the Chairman NZ Group Nigeria, His Royal Highness, Alaji Aliyu Damesi, the Chairman of the Koscharis Group, Mr. Constance Maduka, distinguished guests, your Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps present, ladies and gentlemen. It really is a very special pleasure to be here with you for the Dubai Professional Business Summit, which I'm told is a platform for discussing beneficial investment and business opportunities on the global scene. I must thank uh, the Christ the Redeemer's Fellowship for the honor of this invitation to deliver this keynote address. This year's summit seeks to explore the investment opportunities between the UAE and Nigeria. We already know that about a decade back in 2008, at the height of the global financial crisis, investors sought out the emerging markets in Africa as the last investment frontiers, and there was then a sense of urgency. But little traction was gained. That opportunity was lost. However, it seems to me that the next best time to explore those investment opportunities is clearly now. Why? Consider, for instance, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF's recent upgrade of the economic outlook for Sub-Saharan Africa and the major role that Nigeria's emergence from a recession onto positive growth is expected to play in that regional outlook. The prospects are clearly bright. In February 2017, the present administration, the present government of Nigeria, launched the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 to 2020. The recovery plan was conceptualized to place the Nigerian economy on the path of stronger, more sustainable and inclusive growth. In Q1 2018, the first quarter of 2018, the economy grew 1.95% and is projected to grow 3% over this year, driven by stronger oil prices, stable production, increased non-oil uh, non -oil output and foreign exchange availability. Inflation has fallen 16 times month to month from 18.72% in January 2017 to 11.6% in May 2018. Foreign investment has also risen, and this is new investment, from a low of about a billion in the first quarter, a billion US dollars in the first quarter of 2017 to about 4.1 billion in the third quarter of 2017. That's a 150% growth. Total capital inflow, and this is fresh capital, in the first last quarter of 2017 was about $12.2 billion, a growth of about another 136% over the quarter ending in 2017. With no restrictions whatsoever on ownership of businesses and guaranteed 100% repatriation of invested funds, we have a stable uh, foreign exchange market combined with rising income levels. Nigeria's external reserves have risen to a four-year high of 47.8 billion as of the 14th of May 2018, that's US dollars. Our fundamentals are extremely good and the economic recovery and growth plan is being implemented to keep the economy on the path of sustainable economic growth and global competitiveness. If you ever have reason to doubt the investment case for Nigeria, all you need to do is to look at China's investments with, and its projected investments with over 60 billion US dollars worth of investments earmarked for Africa, especially in 2018. 
The largest portion of that, of course, is directed at Nigeria from all indications. I think it bears repeating to say that the case for investing in Nigeria is a compelling one. And most of us here are possibly already familiar with the story. For instance, as we strive to diversify our economy away from oil, strengthen our institutions and our infrastructure, Nigeria is poised to be the fastest growing African economy and the world's 14th largest economy by 2050. This becomes even more compelling as we are the most populous African nation in the world and by the other projections, uh, the other demographic projections, we are to be the third largest country in the world by 2050 in terms of population. This means that Nigeria is the consumption demand market and the labor supply market of the future, at least as far as Africa is concerned, and as far as most of the world will be concerned at that time. Therefore, just as Dubai is seen as an attractive business destination, a major transport hub for passengers and cargo, connecting with the Middle East to the connecting the Middle East to the rest of the world, Nigeria's cities like Abuja, Kano, Lagos, and Port Harcourt are certainly attractive investment destinations for capital, for skills, technology, connecting Africa to the rest of the world today and certainly beyond. Going by the trade figures between Nigeria and the uh, UAE, what I will say is that the good news is that there is a lot of headroom for expansion. Nigeria's capital inflows from the UAE were less than 350 million in 2017. Today, that's 350 million US dollars. Today, trade relations with the UAE in the first quarter of 2018 were barely hinged on the importation of a few items such as motorcycles, used vehicles, and CKD, completely knocked down parts of vehicles. Some chemical fertilizers, electrical parts for telephones, worth just under 50 million US dollars. So the possibilities for significantly deeper trade and investment relations must be explored by both countries to harness that potential. Starting with aviation, Nigeria has announced the commencement of the process of commissioning its major international airports with a view to attracting world-class investors and of course world-class operators. And only this week we've, uh, we announced our new national carrier, Nigeria Air, which we expect will be owned and run entirely by the private sector, with the government having only a notional 5% stake in that enterprise. These initiatives are aimed at consolidating Nigeria's position as the regional hub for trade and investment. And taking our hospitality sector and our boarding tourism drive as examples, about 1.8 million international travelers spend two nights on average at Nigeria's estimated 10,000 hotel rooms every year. This generated in the past year about 210 million US dollars for that industry, which barely reflects on Nigeria's 500 billion US dollars GDP size. Nigeria's hotel industry alone is projected to grow double digits up to 2020 as the sector bounces back post-recession to one of the fastest growing in the world. The possibilities for investors, of course, is significant. Major international hotel brands have obviously recognized the enormous opportunities with the likes of Hilton, Marriott, Westin, Sheraton, Radisson, and Best Western scheduled to open new hotels in Nigeria over the next three to five years. In real estate, Projects such as the Eco Atlantic City project in Lagos, which has been dubbed Africa's Dubai, offering 10 million square meters of multi-billion dollar grade A real investments, real estate investments, are also opportunities worthy of note. The project is entirely privately owned, but it is supported by both the federal and the Lagos state governments. In June 2016, Lagos state government went into partnership with Dubai Holdings LLC to build Africa's first smart city in Lagos. Upon completion, the project is expected to attract several billions of dollars in investments to Lagos, create thousands of jobs, and transform the Ibeju-Leki axis in Lagos state of Nigeria 
in particular and the entire state. The new city will be the world's first carbon neutral city. In Abuja, a real estate company, a uh, real estate development company also, the Land of Honey Abuja Development Company, in partnership with the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja, is pioneering Nigeria's first private new city development project. It's called the Land of Honey City, Yanga in Abuja. The company is also poised to deliver a world-class mixed-use new city, occupying a land area of approximately 1,667 hectares. In the same vein, the UAE continues to serve as an inspiration for business in Nigeria. The Oceana Residences, a multi-million dollar real estate development in Lagos, Nigeria, was designed by the architects behind the famous Dubai Marina here in, in Dubai. All these exciting new developments are supported by a thriving construction sector with steady sources of cement manufactured locally. Aliko Dangote, uh, BUA or Boa Group and Lafarge are examples of some of the indigenous cement industry and several other companies, Wemco for example, is also an, is, is also an, uh, an indigenous uh, company specializing in building materials. Aliko Dangote is an excellent example with investments in cement manufacturing in 10 other African countries. In 2014, the Sovereign Fund Investment Corporation of Dubai, ICD, bought a 1.4% stake in Dangote Cement for 300 million US dollars. Of course, it's an open secret that Nigerians love, uh, love shopping, and Dubai is a favorite destination for thousands of Nigerian shoppers, from the uh, popular Dera market to your world-class malls all over uh, uh, Dubai. Similarly, with our teeming population and market size, there are investment opportunities for malls and shopping centers across the country. To buttress this fact, retail space in Nigeria reached 326,958 square meters in 2017, compared to just 30,000 square meters in 2005. From just two shopping malls in Lagos and Abuja 13 years ago, the country now has several malls, such as the Palms Flagship Mall in Lagos, the Jabi Lake Mall in Abuja, the Keja City Mall, and the Maryland Mall also in Lagos, Novari Malls, Hub Mart, among others in Port Harcourt, in Ibado, in Ilori, Oweri, and Unisha, all of which are commercially viable in those densely populated cities across the country. Novari Real Estate Africa, an investment portfolio company involved in property development across Africa, has just recently opened its $54 million Novari Central Mall in Wuse Zone 5, that's also in Abuja. ShopRite, a South African uh, supermarket chain, has supermarkets now, large supermarkets in 12 states of Nigeria. This is one of, this is one of the sectors with great potential when compared to South Africa, for example, which is Africa's largest retail economy with 23 million square meters, but has a lower GDP and a population less than a fourth of Nigeria's. Little wonder then that Malk Holdings, a US, UAE business, uh, uh, the Malk Holdings is a, is a Dubai conglomerate, is investing $40 million to transform the 30,000 square meters of the Lagos uh, National Arts Theater into a shopping mall. The Nigerian creative industry, I'm sure most of us have also heard, is particularly involved with uh, Dubai and several uh, Dubai fashion, uh, several fashion houses here in Dubai, and several others in the high-end fashion industry, and has had long informal links with Dubai for sourcing of fabric and other clothing inputs. More recently, in entertainment, one of Nollywood's and Nollywood is our equivalent of Hollywood, by the way. And one of Nollywood's highest grossing movies, The Wedding Party 2, produced by Nigeria's renowned entertainment guru, Mo Abudu of Ebony Life, and directed by a lady called uh, Kemi Adetiba, is evidence of the successful collaboration between Nigerian filmmakers 
and Dubai local partners such as the Dubai Tourism, Amani, Atlantis, The Palm, Gaia Grand and Palazzo Versace Hotels. All of this collaborated with the producers of uh, The Wedding Party 2. The movie made an initial 73 million naira on the opening weekend, the highest record by a Nigerian movie to date, and by day five had earned 100 million. Eventually, the movie uh, grossed about half a, half a billion naira worldwide, making a decent profit of over 170 million naira. Agriculture perhaps uh, remains one of the best investment opportunities in Nigeria. Only three years ago, we were importing $5 million of rice every single day. Today, we produce 10 million metric tons of paddy rice annually, and we're importing only 2% of our rice consumption now. So the point we're making is that investing in agriculture in Nigeria is certainly worthwhile. Investments in milling capacity has risen astronomically since then. One investor in rice milling has just recently invested in a million tons of uh, a million tons of rice mill capacity. There's a Mexican farmer, Carlos Farms, uh, who is a farmer in vegetables, especially bananas and pineapples. And he had initially planned to grow bananas and pineapples for export until he discovered that he was making far more money selling his bananas locally at $3 per kilogram instead of what he would have earned a dollar per kilogram if he had exported the same bananas. So the point of the matter, of course, is that with the sheer size of our population, just selling the local market alone is a, is a tremendous commercial opportunity all by itself. With a substantial percentage of the world's arable land, and over half of that uncultivated, it is becoming clearer that the world will be looking to Africa, and Nigeria in particular, as its food basket in the coming years. Just to take China's demand alone, China has 27% of the world's population, but only 7% of the world's arable land for agriculture. China needs 2 million tons of hybrid soya beans per annum for livestock feed and vegetable oil. And we have not met that demand, not Nigeria, not anywhere else in Africa. Sesame seed is also in high demand. About 2 million tons per annum is the demand from China alone. Vietnam, Japan, and several Arab countries, sesame seed oil and cake is used for confectioneries. That demand is largely unmet. China also requires over 2.3 million tons of cassava chips and cassava products for industrial starch and ethanol. And we've not been able to meet that demand, not even the demand for cocoa. How about goat meat? Well, Nigerians are very familiar with goat meat. 120,000 carcasses of goat meat is required weekly in different countries, especially Arab countries. And there's still a major gap in supply there as well. Most of, de most of Vietnam's demand for over 2.5 million tons of cashew is unmet. We can export practically everything we are producing today and will not even scratch the surface of the demand from that one country. So Nigeria's role as food provider to the world, and especially in the next few decades, is clear is difficult, and I, and, and, I, and I say this with emphasis, not to be tremendously successful as an investor in agriculture in Nigeria. I'm sure uh, Mr. Maduka, Kostaris Maduka, will also be able to say great things about the rice, his rice investment in, uh, in Nigeria. Similarly, Nigeria's ICT sector has attracted numerous international investments with proven successes from fintech and e-commerce to education to health, media, and logistics. With Dubai being at the cutting edge of both technology as a future city, as well as the financial capital of the Middle East, you are well placed to take advantage of the very many opportunities that are available. The sector, including the communication sector, accounts for 9% of Nigeria's GDP and has doubled in size over the past seven years in particular. 
with over 163 million mobile phone subscribers, 60% of them actively on the internet, and 23 million on Facebook. You'll agree with me that our ICT sector is one of limitless potential and is of course yearning for more investments to propel the sector to an 88 billion digital economy, 88 billion US dollars that is, digital economy over the next 10 years. In broadband infrastructure, for example, Main One Company, which uh, was founded by a Nigerian-born lady, Funke Okweke, launched West Africa's first privately owned submarine cable barely uh, seven years ago. The cable was built over a two-year period and the initial investment of $240 million was financed entirely by African investors and the project broke even in just two years after its launch. Today, companies such as Flutterwave, a payment solutions company, and Della, a software development engineering company, Jobberman, an, an online human resource company, and Conga, an all online mall, some may be familiar with some of these names, are poignant examples of how young Nigerian entrepreneurs are using technology disruptively to create profit in various business lines. So both in the, in the infrastructure end and, also, and the retail end of, of, of that infrastructure, there are tremendous opportunities. And evidently, the smart money all over the world is paying attention. For example, Flutterwave saw an investment of 10 million US dollars, Conga, an impressive 25 million US dollars, the second largest amount raised by an African startup business on the continent. Andela, another of our leading technology brands, attracted equity investments from Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg. The Lagos, city, uh, the Lagos Mega City is a project, is also an example of the province successes and the great potential of ICTs uh, in Nigeria, with its high quality and relatively lower cost talent, as well as a strong community of incubators, accelerators, and development communities. Lagos witnessed over a hundred million US dollars of local and international venture capital in 2017 alone. As government, we are committed to supporting the sector by resolving the known challenges of insufficient digital infrastructure and also having the right policy and regulatory framework. In the technology space, we are deepening broadband connectivity with over 3,250 kilometers of fiber optic cable laid in the major cities. We've grown from 6% to 22% broadband access in the last two and a half years. We are licensing regional infra codes to provide open access to fiber at controlled rates. And we are addressing the right of way on structured taxation challenge through a standardization model. In other words, we're ensuring that because Nigeria is a federation of 36 states, each to some extent autonomous, we're ensuring that laying cables, laying fiber optic cables or any other type of infrastructure across state lines does not mean paying different rates across state, state lines. So we're ensuring that there is a standardization of whatever payments and we've agreed with, the, with all of the state authorities to ensure that our rates are cheap and affordable so that it does not in any way hinder the investments that are to come. Our administration's strong leadership, commitment to good governance, has proved to be a critical where our economy has recorded successes. As we've demonstrated in recent years that good governance and prudent management of resources means that you can do more with far less. We have, despite almost 60% less revenues, invested so far 1.3 trillion naira in capital expenditure. That's the highest in the nation's history. The current wisdom is in letting the private sector invest wherever it can and in practically any sector of the economy, even in those that once carried the halo of national security assets such as telecoms and power. Investments are open in practically any of the uh, various sectors of the economy. Consequently, we have seen the emergence of dynamic Pan-African investors who on account of their track record 
are even able to borrow commercially cheaper than government. The Dangote investment, for example, in a 650,000 6, barrel a day refinery, a subsea pipeline, and a fertilizer plant is in excess of 16 billion US dollars. Boa, which is also a cement and sugar conglomerate, has in the past year, the past two years, invested $2 billion in cement factories and in enhancing the sugar facility. We're also utilizing the special economic zones, which will provide all the required infrastructure and regulatory facilitation to deliver expedited productivity. Our oil and gas free zones have over 20 billion in fresh investments already. Again, these zones allow 100% foreign ownership and 100% repatriation of capital and profits. A good example of that is the Lagos Deep Offshore Logistics Free Zone, LADOL, the Lagos uh, Deep Offshore Logistics Free Zone, which has invested already over 600 million US dollars in private investments and has outlined plans to attract more investments of up to 5 billion US dollars into the country through its industrial free zones. Although the sizes of investments differ, the subtext is the same. The confidence of both domestic and foreign investors in the opportunities available in the country is very clear and is demonstrated day by day. One of the most important policy decisions taken by President Muhammad Buhari was to do all that was possible to improve Nigeria's business environment and attractiveness to investors on an incremental basis. This was critical, especially as we urgently needed to reform our economy, to focus on agriculture, on manufacturing, on services, on ICT, and other non-oil economic activity. We had learned a hard lesson. Falling oil prices in 2015 going into 2016, low production on account of restiveness in the Niger Delta, had led to a recession and the consequence, of, of course, of over-dependence on oil had brought us to a recession, especially in the period 2016 and almost half of, of uh, and, uh, the first quarter of 2017. Consequently, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, I just repeat that, Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, we just call it PEBEC for short, was inaugurated in July 2016 as the administration's flagship initiative to reform the business environment, attract investments, and diversify the economy to reduce our dependence and reliance on oil. The PEBEC, which I have the privilege of chairing, was run by an incredible team led by Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, who is on this trip with me. I believe she's already made a presentation. Has undertaken strategic business environment reforms across board using a 60-day national action plan as short-term accelerators to deliver impact. We focused on several key areas of reform, especially uh, in using uh, the World Bank's doing business methodology and the particular areas that the World Bank focuses on in assessing the business environment. These include making it easier to register businesses, speed in obtaining construction permits, the ease of accessing credit for business, the ease of paying taxes, the ease of being connected to electricity, trading across borders and facilitating entry and exit, ease of registering property and enforcement contracts. And we have two homegrown indicators of our own, entry and exit of people and trading within Nigeria. Through systemic changes, we are repositioning regulators, all of our regulators, the regulators in all aspects of business, as facilitators of business. And we're seeing a steadily improving transparency and efficiency of service delivery by the public sector. Reforms focused on automation of services to eliminate manual procedures and promote online procedures, reducing the cost and time for certain processes to be completed, reducing paperwork and increasing transparency are just some of the examples of what we're trying to achieve. Practical examples of success include leveraging the use of technology to fast track business registration to 24 hours and electronic filing and payment of taxes, 
a functioning tried and tested 48-hour electronic visa procedure and a, a, an executive order mandating greater transparency and efficiency across all government agencies. The reforms have led to reduction in cost and time, as well as greater transparency for small and medium-sized enterprises in particular. These reforms delivered immediate improvement. On the World Bank's 2018 Ease of Doing Business report, released in October 2017, Nigeria moved up 24 places from the 169th position to 145 and was recognized as one of the 10 most reformed business climates in the world. The reforms are complemented by a welcoming attitude to investment to properly guide investors and make it easier for them to access required information. The National Investment Promotion Commission, or NIPC, recently released a compendium of investment incentives in Nigeria. One of those incentives is that we offer a pioneer status tax holiday of up to five years for qualifying businesses. We also have tax incentives for research and development and export incentives as well. We've also developed a hand-holding strategy for investors who are having difficulties with rolling out on account of bureaucratic or other technical constraints. For a period of, of six weeks between March and April, we implement, that is March and April this year, 2018, we implemented an innovative scheme for fast-tracking investment implementation by a series of engagements between uh, all decision makers in government and potential investors in what we described as focus laboratories or focus labs. Now, this involves sitting in the same room day after day where, where investors and relevant ministers, regulators and heads of power status jointly working together to resolve bottlenecks and obstacles in the way of investments. I was also present at several of the sessions of the Focus Labs to encourage everyone along and to see that uh, things were moving forward. This proved to be tremendously successful. From July 2017, the PEBEC focused on collaborating with the states of the Federation, with the 36 states of our Federation, to implement the reforms introduced at the national levels to improve the business environment at the state level. We've chosen in particular two states to begin with, Lagos and Kano, and the result has been phenomenal. So Lagos and Kano have also tried, and these are the uh, major commercial cities, have also tried to implement the same national, uh, the, the same national uh, incentives, the same national reforms which were put in place. And that you know, ha has shown uh, tremendous results. Significant legislative and judicial reform has also been achieved working closely with the National Assembly and the judiciary. In 2017, PEBEC's collaboration with the National Assembly delivered two acts, uh, two laws, for enabling access to credit, which was a very vital requirement for uh, small and medium enterprises. This year, the Companies and Allied Matters Bill, which is our company law legislation, has been repealed and reenacted by the Senate and is currently awaiting passage by the House of Representatives. This promises to be revolutionary in so many different ways, especially as it takes into account uh, the digital economy and how to regulate the digital economy in a manner that does not get in the way of business. The judiciary has also proved to be a strong partner in reforming dispute resolution and settlement, a key factor for investors. Lagos State in April 2018 commissioned the Small Claims Court to handle commercial claims, which are liquidated money demands of up to $15,000 and below. Adjudication of cases before the Small Claims Court up to judgment is expected to take a maximum period of 60 days. Kano State has also recently passed a new Magistrate Courts Law, which will see the designation of Small Claims Courts in the state very shortly. Concerted efforts are being made towards also upgrading our current trade portal to a more robust national trading platform. This encompasses a more sophisticated single window platform with scanners and a ports community portal for goods being imported into and exported out of Nigeria. Recently, the Federal Executive Council 
approved the concession of Nigeria's international airports in Lagos and Abuja to ensure that Nigeria is well placed as a regional hub for investors and business travelers. To deepen our business reforms, the very first executive order of, of our administration was signed in 2017 on transparency and efficiency in the public service to deliver the impact of completed reforms in the frontline offices that engage with the public by fostering collaboration between our MDAs, uh, the, the ministries and, uh, and uh, the agencies and the parastatals in their service delivery and institutionalizing systemic changes in a sustainable manner. The intervention has been acknowledged as one of the federal government's most innovative strategic initiatives and a blueprint to deliver quick, pragmatic changes for Nigerians and for our investors. When fully implemented, that executive order will radically transform the way the federal government, its ministries, departments, and agencies serve the business community and the public at large. Our vision is a dramatic improvement in Nigeria's business environment with increased cross-border trading, increased productive activity across economic sectors, and an improved business environment that is attractive to both domestic and foreign investors, where policies are predictable and consistent, where public and private uh, civil servants, as well as partners and uh, uh, partners, uh, facilitators as opposed to obstacles or adverse uh, regulators. Our overarching goal is to make Nigeria a major global investment destination by continually and incrementally implementing improvements and reforms in our business environment that will be visible, not merely in numerical rankings, but in the stories and testimonials of business owners and entrepreneurs across the entire country. We are devoted to that particular pathway and it is, as you can imagine, a, a, a process which involves doing things differently, changing existing ways of, of doing things. It has been slow, but it has gone very quickly, especially in the past year and a half. And we expect that the incremental changes will make a huge difference in the entire business environment as we go forward. I'd like to thank you very much for listening. Thank you.